I want to know what you guys think about prideful people. An article on johnmaxwell.com says there's nothing wrong with taking pride in accomplishments, but when being prideful causes unhealthy competition mm -hmm. and even jealousy <clears throat> towards others, it's probably doing you more damage than you think. So ladies, tell me, does pride ever get in the way of your own happiness? You know, there's an ancient Hebrew proverb that warns pride comes before the fall. And there's also a Ooh. saying that pride is a fool's best friend. Ooh. And I often didn't understand what that meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, as you grow older, you like... Maybe. <laughs> But let it go. Let it go. <laughs> but don't you think pride sometimes also helps you? Like, if you know what you're worth and you're like, you know what? I'm not taking that job because I, isn't that pride? Absolutely. Or is you can hold your pride for sure. Right. I think that's knowing your self-worth. Is it? Pride, I think, is when you get so caught up that you don't see that maybe you can make concessions so that you mm -hmm. still can get what you want mm -hmm. and you can compromise. But pride is when it's just, it's just like that. It's, it's just like, it. it's just a stone wall. Right. And you can't do anything. Like when you were in a, let's say we were in an argument and I know I'm wrong, but my pride will stop <laughs> me from That's admitting that I'm wrong. I mm -hmm. think there right? is a healthy amount of pride that we all should have. Yeah. Yes. A healthy amount. Like they said here, you know, you're proud of your accomplishments. You recognize your self-worth, your value. That is healthy. In my case, mine isn't the kind of pride that it's like, oh, I'm better. Mine is, I can be prideful to a point where I don't want to be embarrassed. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like, I'll be like, my pride will get in the way of me possibly, like something dumb, like we have amazing guests here on the show all the time that possibly I'm a fan of or I'll want a fangirl over, yeah. but my pride will be like, you'll look stupid if you ask them for a photo. So I won't ask for a photo. Right. And then you don't get it. But I mean, me? But uh, Lonnie, but Lonnie, Lonnie got, on Instagram Lonnie got with a, everybody. a camera roll full of all the pictures. But, but it's those moments where I'll be like, am I going to look stupid? Like, even with doing a show like Mass Singer, yeah. mm -hmm. Iz has always told me, Adrian, your pride is going get to get in the way of you getting great opportunities yep. because you won't go oh for it for, oh. the, for the fear of embarrassment. Got it. Like, my pride will get in the way of being like, I'll just try it even if I look stupid. Me looks like, you know, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I won't go for it. So and things like that, like when they asked me to do Mass Singer, at first I was like, no, I'm gonna look so, I'm gonna put on a costume and be like, eh, mm -hmm. sing my song. Like, that's how I initially felt. And my husband was like, nope, nope, you are going to get out there, you're gonna do it. Like he really encouraged me. Good. If I'm honest, he really just signed me up without me knowing, and but so that's another conversation. <laughs> but that was, but look at what happened. Yeah. And I had of one it. of the greatest experiences of How my How about life. that? I remember. It reignited my love for singing, like, but I never would have known that had I not taken the chance right. to put my pride aside. Right. And see, that's, I put my pride aside all the time. Y'all know. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're like, that's I got tough. no ego. Here I am. <laughs> it's like, no, I remember when, um, this was before I, I got the reel. Um, I was asked to do the Ellen show, but I was asked to sit behind the DJ stand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You and DJ I was Ronnie? Like, I was, no, I ain't no DJ. <laughs> but they was like, sit behind the DJ stand. I was like, well, why can't I be a guest? You know what I mean? Right. Now, I could have been prideful and be like, no, no, no. But I said, no. And I'll honey, sit not only were you a guest, but you also hosted the show. Yes. And that's, what, that? that's and what happened. About that? Look at God, how he kept opening the doors. You how put your that? pride aside, and you, you went from uh, behind a DJ booth yeah. to, to co-hosting to hosting. Right. Hosting. So exactly. that, and I, I had a guess. my own show, because I ended up getting on this show with you ladies. There so you go. Let that pride go. Let that mm -hmm. pride go. Put it go. aside. OK, switching gears, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, the importance of having a sense of humor. <laughs> According to BigThink.com, having a strong sense of humor is an essential life skill. The article says that being funny can lead to better health, better relationships, and even a better career. And so better ladies, sex. Okay, that too. Do you think <laughs> having a sense of humor can be more helpful than smart? Oh, than I will take... Smart. I will take sense of humor any day over, you know, you did Me calculus. Too. I got a calculator on my phone. That's for that. Right. Like, I don't need a brainiac in that sense. I actually think that people that are funny tend to be really smart in their own way. And able to, I'm looking at you specifically as a comedian. <laughs> right, exactly, I was thinking You gotta thing. be witty, you gotta be in the more comedic timing. That yeah. is, that takes some smarts to do that. I just don't think that people equate it to necessarily like book smart. Right. I like smart people. And more than funny? I like smart people more because sometimes... Because you can be the funny. Exactly, but sometimes funny people don't know how to read the room. 
and they don't know how to read what's going on because they're so they're so on. Like I know a lot of my friends, they just on, on, on all the time. It's like, calm, chill out, calm down. Whereas I find smart people can be funny, mm -hmm. but they also can be very intelligent and it's it's sexy and it turns me on. You know, so I you <laughs> it's just like I just think I just think that if you're smart, you know how to do all those other things. Like this show. Sometimes I'm 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 thinking about something, like we'll talk about a topic, and I'll come in and I'll go, you know, I'm gonna be funny about this topic. Right. But then maybe you say something and you be like, dang, it's deep. Right. I can't keep going on with right. that. Da, 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 da. Right. It's like I gotta switch gears. And so mm -hmm. that's when the, the intelligent comes in. And that's why I like smart people over funny people. That's really? Why. Yeah, that's how I, I, I feel like, like you're really funny. And 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 I think you're you're No, old, but you're smart, it started, but... no, Garcelle, yeah. the first season, it was bad. Cause I was just doing jokes, jokes, Were jokes, you? jokes, 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 jokes. <laughs> and people get so mad. They was get so Somebody mad. Somebody be like, over here having a breakdown. Real. When I was five, this happened to me. Lonnie be in the corner like, well, girl, girl you 45 girl. now. Like, you, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was getting right. mad. Because it was about reading the room. Right. And reading the, the moment. I do like smart guys too, but I think I tend to go for the funny funny guys, yeah. because I think like if you're fighting, he can say something funny, or I think humor takes you a long way in a relationship. I it think does. humor is also something that it depends. Like what I may find funny, you may not find funny. Mm. Like in my case, my husband is ridiculously smart. Like the man, I call him Snapple Facts, because he can watch Jeopardy and answer all of, he's never wow. missed an episode since 1996, fun fact. And. I will watch my husband watch Jeopardy, and I think that's funny. That's like, hilarious. I think that's funny that this that man he is, knows. he is funny without knowing he's funny. He's sitting there very focused, and my ass is dying on the floor <laughs> watching him watch Jeopardy. You feel me? That's yeah. why I love that. You know, but it's different yeah. things, different strokes for different yeah. folks. This is true. Now, how about this one? We know most people have, a, you know, little habits of routine that they aren't really proud of. For example, those TV shows we watch, but we're too ashamed to tell anybody. Well, according to the New York Times, we need to stop feeling shame and take the guilt out of our guilty pleasures. Mm. The article says watching mindless programming allows your Ooh. brain to exit problems solving mode and it can improve your overall mental health. So ladies, do you have a guilty pleasure and why do you feel guilty about it? 90 day fiance. <laughs> really? I am obsessed <laughs> because sometimes I just need to have mindless TV on. If I miss an episode, I don't feel like I missed anything and I can just watch other people's problems and have a good time. <laughs> I, I love, love Maury. Oh, you do? Oh my, I don't know. Same. You know what? I will tell I do love like, Maury. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look a little bit of it. Yeah. And before you know it, it's the end of the show. I mean, like, that is not her baby. You know he ain't the daddy. He ain't. And then they start. You know what's gonna happen. Right, right, right. But it's like a train right. wreck. It's it the is. run for me. It's the when they go running. It's like, where did you think you were going? Okay. Fun fact, you guys. You know that I used to work on the Maury show. What? Really? Yes. Doing so did Sonia. What? Fun fact. Doing um, what? I initially started my daytime television career on Maury. I would come in and do stories like, can you tell if it's a man or a woman? No. I swear. I, I need video yes, of this. I did shows that were, some were like really touching where it was um, about bullies, young girls that were wow. being bullied. I did stories about young women that wanted to be sexy like overly sexy yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. were, they were trying to be fast. Uh -huh. We had to talk about that with them. And then um, they changed all of that. They go straight to yeah. straight, straight to you, are you the father. You the father. <laughs> yeah, but that is a great, I, I do love me some, I gotta be honest, I love what they call conflict daytime TV. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Where there's, it's Maury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, That's I, or, I could sit and watch that yeah. all day, but I was a huge fan of, this may be aging me, but y'all remember Richard Bray Bay? Oink, 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 and the sounds? Okay. No. Garza, you don't remember? No. Richard Bay, Donahue, um, oh, Sally, no, Jesse, Donahue. Sally Jesse Raphael oh, was Sally my Jesse favorite. Yeah, yeah. 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 A oh, Jenny Lake. Guys, Jenny my, Jones. but my first ever daytime appearance was on Jenny Jones. What'd you do? I was on there uh, with my first group, 3LW. We performed as like young, talented oh. teens or something. Oh. My outfit looked like a dinosaur, so. Don't oh, Google it. I'm gonna have to Google it's and get really it. Put it up on my Instagram too. Daytime TV conflict? So All good. The way. Okay. Next, next week, guys, we too will be having paternity tests. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. <laughs>